for them and any others that may have passed in our, in our town. All right, thank you. All right, well, we'll move right on down the line here. Uh, have a motion to adopt the agenda as it is. I'll make the motion. Move. Second, King. And for all in favor? Aye. Aye. So, uh, Don's and I, uh, Jim raised his hand. He's and I, Jeff. Uh, and four. All right. Uh, next is the consent agenda. Uh, motion to accept that. Move to accept the consent agenda. Second. Okay, Jim. I'm sorry. Did Mike, did you make a second? Who made the motion? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, I did. Okay. All right, all in favor? Hey, let's aye. Jim, Jeff. King, aye. All right, with that, we'll move to uh, pub public comments. Do we have any public comments come in, Zach? Uh, to my knowledge, we haven't received any public comments. Um, I, I don't know if Sherry's audio works or not, but she's shaking her head. She hasn't received any public comments either, so no, we don't have any public comments for this evening. Okay, well then move, we'll move right along to the staff updates. Alrighty, I'll go ahead and start us off. Um, so tomorrow we're anticipating that the paving project will start <coughs> at 103 uh, Manatee Street. So we'll be getting started on that. Uh, great job to the Public Works Department um, last week in getting that uh, pipe sleeve buried um, for future uh, septic tank needs uh, for, for Paxson. Um, so we're glad we got that in the ground and that squared away. And uh, everything should be proceeding tomorrow with the paving project. Um, otherwise, everybody's doing a great job and continuing to, uh, <laughs> to operate in a, with everything going on. So I uh, just want to commend all our staff on continuing to do a great job and, uh, and especially keep my thoughts with our law enforcement officers as well um, with everything going on in the world. So um, they continue to show up every day and do a great job, and, and I'm proud of every one of them. So just want to recognize them during this time. Um, but otherwise, that's uh, the majority of what we have. We'll have our follow-up meeting on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Um, to vote on the public hearing items that we discussed this evening. And uh, otherwise, everything's continuing uh, as, as usual or as normal as it can be with, uh, with the events that we're encountering these days. So um, with that, I'll, I don't believe Public Works is with us this evening. Um, like I mentioned, they had been working on the uh, parking lot this past week. Uh, they're also doing some uh, paving projects or some pothole repair projects throughout the town. And I did want to mention that um, really quickly. Uh, I'm switch my screen over. Everybody can see that. This is the uh, the pavement and the uh, paving repairs and priority map throughout the town. And uh, so we so basically, if you go on the website under road maintenance. There's a form here for reporting potholes. We've had quite a few people who have reported potholes. I believe some of y'all have uh, even submitted some potholes. Um, and so as they address these potholes, uh, they'll actually take a picture once they're complete. I'll go ahead and click on one over on Pine Lake and you can see the completed patch um, once those potholes have been complete. And so the status will change to show that those have been completed. Um, they knocked out a couple of others over in uh, Old Cape Carteret um, this past week. So just uh, they're doing a great job at keeping on top of those. And as those uh, requests come in, we'll continue to put those on the map and update accordingly to reflect that. Um, otherwise, they've been doing some work on some of the repairs to town hall and also uh, mowing the right of ways uh, throughout the town.
All right. Sounds good. Looks good. Uh, yeah. Next up would be the. It was clicking in, I guess. Uh, next up. It was clicking in, I guess. Uh, next up. Somebody asking a question. I think we'll move on to item seven, which is the public hearing on the FY 2020-2021 budget. All righty. Um, and I don't think we had, I know we have Chief with us, or he was on here this evening, just in case he had any comments. Um, I don't know if Chief is still on here or not, but anyways. Um, <laughs> I, I am with you guys. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm with you guys. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. I'm with you guys. Can you hear me? <laughs> I'm having internet. Yeah, we can hear difficulty. you. Did you say uh, open for comment? Did you say, uh, open yeah, for if you've comment? got anything to share from the police department, just want to make sure you had an opportunity. Just want to make sure you had an opportunity. I appreciate it. Good evening to everyone. And just want to say we're seeing a tremendous increase in traffic lately. Um, we uh, posted uh, the stats on Facebook and uh, the guys have stepped up some of the traffic stops now. They did 125 stops this past month. We had 85 complaints, calls for service, including 10 animal complaints. We had 10 traffic crashes last month and four arrests, including two DWIs. We had That's all I've got for now. That's all I've got for now. All right. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry, Mayor. Just wanted to make sure since he was on here, give him opportunity i was getting a little bit of echo off it sound like we were in a cave i heard him twice <laughs> all right i think he just hopped off so i think let's see i think we're good now i'm not hearing any echo anymore um <laughs> all right so if we're good i'll go ahead and move on to the um to the budget i'll go ahead and pull that up All right, so on the screen right now, we've got the budget ordinance for FY 2020-2021. Um, the budget is balanced at $1,632,803 for revenues and $1,632,803 for expenditures. The tax rate uh, will remain the same at 0.2125 per $100 of valuation. And, uh, that's pretty much the uh that's a quickest summary of it um be happy to get into more detail um but we've put together all of the uh pages um or the budget document and prepared the graphs and everything else um which are available on the town website um so those are on there where people want to go and review those um and then it has everything on there including the budget message and everything else so if you go under the town manager tab and uh, look under that um, page that has the budget documents. You can see all of this uh, information on there. Um, like I said, be happy to answer any questions, um, but I want to uh, thank the board for everybody's hard work on the budget. Also want to uh, thank Sandy for all of her work um, and all of the contributions she made uh, to the budget process and to helping get all the information and the numbers together and helping with the analysis of each of the departments. So I want to thank Sandy for that. Um, but uh, that's everything I have in terms of the budget. Um, be happy to answer any questions or um, if not, then y'all could proceed into the public hearing portion. Zach, let's have a little reminder about this because we are virtual. That's a different procedure we're having to go through for the public uh, hearing aspect of it. 
Yes. Yeah, so for today, uh, what you guys would do is uh, somebody make a motion and second it to open the public hearing. Um, allow for public comments if there are any. If there are none, then you could go ahead and make the motion to close the public hearing. And then because we'll have to wait those 24 hours after the public hearing to allow for any additional comments, um, we'll do that. And uh, on Wednesday for our follow-up meeting, that's when the budget can be voted on. All right, so I'll entertain a motion to uh, start the public hearing. I'll make a motion. We go into public hearing. I second the motion. Thank you, gentlemen. All in favor? Okay, uh, I see Steve, Don. So all the hands are raised. Mike? I need a verbal friend. Mike King, you still there? Mike, Mike, are you with us? There, hey, Jack, uh, somebody uh muted me uh yes are we here okay we hear you now okay hey, thank you all right so we are now into the public here is there anyone online that wanted to uh comment i can't see everybody so zach i'm at, I'm at your mercy on this yeah and i just i just pressed the unmute all button so in case there is any comments um entertain those now i believe scott is on the line that's the only person other than I believe brad rich um from the public as far as i can see in the attendance or the attendees list so okay all right, well, I guess with nobody making any comment, then we entertain a motion to come out of the public hearing. I'll make a motion to uh, close public hearing on the budget. I'll second. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Don. All in favor? King, aye. And four, I see four hands and an aye from Mr. King. Thank you, all in favor. All right, next up is the uh, public hearing on the Pamlico Sound Hazard Mitigation Plan. I assume we'll do the same thing with this. Yes, that's correct. Uh, just a moment while I get to that part. All right, so we've been participating in the Pamlico Sound Regional Hazard Mitigation Plan over the past several months. Um, that's a regional um, plan, and it's uh, something that we have to do every several years. Additional details about the plan can be viewed at the www.pamlicohmt.com. Um, it's important to have a hazard mitigation plan in place, especially for um, storm events. You know, in terms of FEMA funding, this is a critical element, is having a adopted and FEMA-approved hazard mitigation plan. This, is address this addresses uh, the region's response to different natural disasters and how those will be handled. Um, and this has been a collaborative process. Uh, we've attended several of the meetings that have taken place uh, regionally. We've also had citizen involvement from some of our residents in the town, uh, where we've traveled to those meetings as well to be in attendance. Uh, so what's requested this evening um, would be to have the public hearing, and then this would be voted on at the Board of Commissioners uh, follow-up meeting on Wednesday. Uh, all right. I think we'll have a motion to go into. Okay, temple. Uh, motion to go into public hearing. I'll make that motion. A second. I'll second. Okay. All in favor. All in favor. Show your hand. King, aye. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. All hands are up. All in favor. Thank you, gentlemen. And now we are in the. Uh, public hearing aspect. Is there anyone online would like to make a comment? All right, with no comment.
comments online, then I will entertain a motion to exit the public hearing on the Pamlico Sound as a mitigation plan. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Uh, second. Second. Okay, I didn't see the hands there. All in favor? Aye. And Mike King gives a D verbal aye. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, next is the budget amendment for the Cape Carteret Trail. All right, so I've got this on the screen now. Um, basically, this is a housekeeping item um, for the auditor. Uh, this is something that we had uh, got comments in our last audit to, to get this, um, this item addressed. Um, so we wanted to do that before the end of this fiscal year. Uh, these funds are primarily geared towards the remaining engineering and design costs that John Freshwater has been working on. Um, so some of these um, have already been expended in the sense that he's done some of the work. There's also some additional work remaining, uh, but this, this makes sure that we're covered for any of those remaining expenses as he finalizes uh, the remaining design portions of the trail um, and as we get the additional uh, survey sections in. So uh, this is pretty much just a housekeeping item to shift those funds around um, and to make sure that we have everything in place um, so that when we when we are invoiced for those charges that we're able to pay those. I move to accept the amendment as. Thank you, Jim. Have a second. I'll second. Any discussion, gentlemen? Yes, uh, this is Mike King. Uh, Zach, on uh, a percentage of the total trail as originally planned, what uh, do you have a rough number of what percentage of the engineering is completed? Um, I would say I know he's waiting on several of the section, the surveys for the sections to come back. He's done a lot of the work um, where I think he can overlay that onto the surveyed section. So uh, I don't know if we could say 50% or somewhere in that ballpark. Um, I know he's just waiting on those surveys to come in so that he can, uh, he's, he's basically gone through and we've identified where the elevated uh, boardwalk sections would be versus the asphalt trail sections done all that analysis um, and that was done for the uh, part F grant uh, to make sure that we had accurate numbers for that grant submission but um yeah I know it's we're probably still several weeks out from having everything put together based off what we have uh, he John Freshwater is also getting some co uh, cost estimates from local contractors to make sure um, that we're in line um, on the cost and that you know if the bond referendum does pass that we have sufficient funds through that bond to be able to complete all the remaining portions of the trail. Yeah, uh, so once he completes these things that he's already begun, uh, I, I would assume that we would, efforts would stop until we have the results of the referendum. Is yes, that... that's correct. Okay, yeah. thank you. Anybody else have any comment? Not that I'll ask all in favor. King, aye. Thank you, gentlemen. I see the hands and I heard your mic. Uh, next up is the selection of the phase one contractor. Alrighty, so the town has been working to solicit proposals from contractors to do the phase one post storm debris uh, clearing activities within the town. Um, our current uh, contracts expire at the end of June, so I definitely want to make sure that we got this squared away before July 1st. 
Uh, so we received uh, two submissions um, that met the deadline. Uh, one of the submissions was from Custom Tree Care, and they proposed a rate of $275 per hour. Uh, and then the other was from TFR Enterprises, and they proposed a rate of 58000 for a 70-hour clearing scenario, which works out to $828.57 per hour. Um, based on the uh, submissions that were received, town staff would recommend selecting Custom Tree Care as the Phase 1 post-storm debris clearing contractor. Um, so the Board of Commissioners are asked to consider selecting Custom Tree Care as the Phase 1 post-storm debris clearing contractor pursuant to the RFP and submitted documentation and to authorize the town manager in consultation with the town attorney to enter into a multi-year contract commencing July 1st, 2020 and ending June 30th, 2023. All right, do I have a motion? I make a motion to accept uh, appoint custom uh, tree care as phase one contractor. Thank you, Steve. Do you have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Don. Any discussion? Yeah. Uh, one question. Uh, is that custom tree care the same company that uh, did provide service at Florence? Yes. Yeah, they're the same uh, company that came in and did the uh, debris removal after Hurricane Florence. Out, out of Kansas, I think. I, but my memory serves me correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, that's I was, right. I was highly satisfied with those people. Yeah, uh, Mayor, uh, I just had one question. Uh, I've never seen this before. The, essentially, going out to 2033, um, th does that mean that we won't have to be doing this every year uh, as we've done for the last 20? Yes, that's correct. We did a multi-year contract rather than doing an individual year so that we don't have to go through this process, uh, you know, year after year. We're actually stretching it out. And I think it's good because we're locking in better rates for an extended period of time. Well, uh, yes, I, I, I totally agree with that. And it's also a, con a contractor that does uh, that kind of work for us uh, to have the assurance that he has this uh, this work going out forward is also good business. That's all I have, Mayor. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? If not, I'll ask all in favor. King, aye. Okay. Four hands and a verbal from Commissioner King. Motion carries. And now on to the selection of phase two contract. All right. Be just a moment, I gotta navigate to that portion of the meeting packet. So the town recently uh, solicited for steel bids for phase two debris removal and for an optional hazardous tree abatement contract. Uh, so we received four different submissions for the uh, phase two debris removal. This involves removing vegetative debris throughout the town from the right of ways um, from the town park um, and also removing the C and D following a storm event. Uh, this would also be a multi-year contract um, ending in 2023 uh, and June 30th, 2023. Um, so we received four different proposals. Uh, basically, we had each of the proposers um, indicate what their per cubic yard rate would be um, based off of the different sites that may be available following a storm event. Um, so for custom tree care, in the one to five mile range, it was $6.20 per cubic yard, or $62 per ton. For the 10 to 15 mile range, it was $6.20 per cubic yard, or 62 per ton. In the 30 to 40 mile range, it was $7.20 per cubic yard, and 72 per ton. Uh, the closest comparison 
Um, so that was to, was TFR Enterprises. In the one to five mile range, it was $5.90 per cubic yard or $89 per uh, ton. 10 to 15 miles, it was $7.80 per cubic yard or 115 per ton. And 30 to 40 miles, it was $8.65 per cubic yard or $145 per ton. Uh, so those were the two closest. In evaluating those two proposals, uh, we took an average cost based off those distances because there's no guarantee of which sites will be open following the storm. Um, after Florence, we had a site that was in that one to five mile range up in Pelletier that was available. However, after Hurricane Dorian, there were no sites that were opened up in the county. Um, so all of the debris had to go to Hibbs Road. So based off that, that's what we took an average. And then on the event, we couldn't take it to Hibbs Road. We'd have to bring it to Tuscarora and that would be in that 30 to 40 mile mile range. So that was the analysis that we applied. And since Custom Tree Care had an average of uh, $6.53 per cubic yard, um, whereas the average cost for TFR Enterprises would be $7.45 per cubic yard, uh, the recommendation would be to go with Custom Tree Care. We also did an analysis based off of the hazardous tree abatement project and comparing um, the lowest two, which was KDF Enterprises and Custom Tree Care. Uh, Custom Tree Care came in at an average cost of $127.11, whereas KDF Enterprises represented an average cost of $221.67. Also, based on the evaluation of those cost proposals, Custom Tree Care came in at a cost of $24 per limb, as opposed to KDF, which was $70 per limb. Um, typically, after a storm event, the limbs are going to be the uh, most uh, substantial number of uh, items that we're going to encounter. Um, that's probably the majority of the work that gets done is the limbs. So I think that's an important metric to consider and evaluating. So based off the average cost and the anticipation, the anticipated um, need after a storm of having to cut more limbs than we would trees or other items. Uh, the recommendation from staff would be to select custom tree care. Uh, the requested action would be for the Board of Commissioners to consider selecting custom tree care as the phase two debris removal and hazardous tree abatement contractor pursuant to the RFP and submitted documentation and to authorize the town manager in consultation with the town attorney to enter into a multi-year contract commencing on July 1st, 2020 and ending on June 30th, 2023. All right, well, I will entertain a motion to accept the custom tree care as the selection of our phase two contractor. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Don. King second. second. Thank King you, second. King. Any, any discussion? I have a couple of comments I wanted to make. Um, this appears to me to be the first time in 20 years we've had the same contractor doing both. Is that correct, Zach, as far as you know? Yes, as far as I know, that is, I believe that's correct um, from what I've seen. Uh, I definitely think, aside from this, there, there are advantages uh, if you have the same contractor that's been mobilized. Um, once they mobilize under phase one, uh, I do think there's definitely a convenience and a quickness of response time um, for them to be able to start tackling um, phase two. But obviously, that's not a consideration in, in how we're awarding the uh, proposals, but just an added benefit of having um, the same contractor for both of those. Absolutely. Uh, a second question. Did any of the contractors attend the bid opening? We did not have any that attended the bid opening. Um, we conducted it at Town Hall um, this past Friday, and we also broadcasted it online at a link that was provided in the RFP, uh, but we did not um, have any folks who were in attendance. Thank you. That's all the comments I have. What, what determines the size of the limb to consider a limb? So for the uh, for the disaster monitoring services contractor, they're with the contractor as they're going through the town. Um, so preliminarily, typically our public works department will work to identify the locations. Um, if there's leaning trees, hazardous stumps, um, hanging limbs, and other things, uh, that's how we do that first round of identification. And then the disaster monitoring services firm 
is actually there with them as they make their way through the town and they document every single limb that is cut. They measure it, they take pictures, they indicate a geographic location where the limb was cut, and then all that information is submitted to FEMA for reimbursement. Um, but uh, typically that's, that's all done as they make their way street by street. But uh, we do a preliminary analysis and identify the most significant portions. And then also our public works department is out there throughout the project and just um, checking in and making sure that, that all those limbs and hazardous trees are getting addressed. Is, is there a measurement difference between a limb and a branch? No, so like the, how we specified it was hanging limbs over two inches in diameter. Um, so if it's greater than two inches in diameter, it would fall into the into that category of being eligible to be removed and then reimbursed by FEMA. Any other comments? If not, all in favor, please show a hand. King, I. Thank you, Mike, for your verbal. All right, all in favor. That fashion passes. Uh, next on the agenda is the selection of a disaster monitoring service contract. Right, same thing with this one. Uh, so we recently solicited proposals for disaster monitoring services, and that's uh, performing that function I just talked about, and that's uh, supervising um, the uh, hazardous tree abatement project, and then also the debris removal. So that involves certifying the trucks. Um, setting up a observation tower at the dump site to monitor the loads. Um, so uh, this is an essential function of making sure that we get FEMA reimbursement. Um, it's very critical to that to verifying that all the loads are properly packed and that they're full, uh, but also certifying that all the trucks are the correct cubic uh, yardage um, that's indicated. So we received uh, three different proposals. Um, one was from Debris Tech. Uh, and that was for basically the way we did it was that we added up what the total daily amount would be um, for the firm. And then we also looked at all the rates and established an average daily amount for what it would cost per position that they indicated. Uh, so Debris Tech indicated or pr provided a proposal that reflected a total daily amount of $397 uh, with an average daily total of $30.54. Uh, Florida Disaster Consultant provided a total daily amount of six, $655.50, and that would be an average daily amount of $50.42. And Summit Design and Engineering Services provided a total daily amount of $1,245, and that works out to an average daily amount of $95.77 uh, per position. Um, so based on the bids received, town staff would recommend selecting Debris Tech as the contractor to provide disaster monitoring services for the town of Cape Carteret. Uh, this is based off their average daily total um, as well as their total daily amount, and that being substantially lower than the other uh, proposals that were received. Uh, the requested action would be for the Board of Commissioners to consider selecting Debris Tech as the disaster monitoring services contractor pursuant to the RFP and the submitted documentation and to authorize the town manager in consultation with the town attorney to enter into a multi-year contract commencing July 1st, 2020 and ending on June 30th, 2023. All right, well, I will entertain a motion to select Debris Tech as our disaster monitoring services contract. Motion to approve De Debris Tech. Thank you, Mike. Do I have a I'll second. Thank you, Don. Any discussion, gentlemen? All right, with no discussion, uh, all in favor, please. King, aye. All right, four hands and one vocal is uh, all in favor. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is the TNT Fireworks. All right.
everybody. So we recently received a conditional use permit application from TNT Fireworks for a temporary fireworks stand to be located at 106 Manatee Street in Cape Carteret, um, which I believe should be on Golf and Golf and Drive is next to Ribeyes. Um, the subject the subject property is located in the B20 commercial zoning district of the town. Uh, the town has historically authorized a fireworks stand at this location. Uh, the fireworks stand would be located, um, it would, and I think that's incorrect, so I apologize for that. Um, it would actually be located next to the ribeyes on Golf and Dolphin Drive. And the authorized agent for the CUP is Taylor Booth, um, and the property owner is Pax and Holt. Um, so the town of Cape Carteret Code of Ordinances indicate that itinerant merchants must obtain a conditional use permit from the Board of Commissioners prior to commencing the described activity. Uh, so that's why we're presenting this to the board um, to stay consistent with what the ordinance indicated. Like I mentioned, we have issued this permit for several years in the past as a zoning permit. Um, however, with, uh, with identifying this process, we're following the process described for itinerant merchants. Um, as they come forward with different requests for the town. Um, so the requested action is for the Board of Commissioners to consider approving the conditional use permit application for TNT fireworks. And um, that should be at, a, at the address located on Golf and Dolphin Drive. Um, I'll pull that up in just a moment on GIS to confirm it. Um, but we have the conditional use permit application here. Go ahead and scroll through that. And there's the, that was where the air would be. So it's a hundred, it's 106 Golf and Dolphin Drive, and it indicates the property under's address 106 Manatee Street. So I apologize for the confusion, but it is, I believe, at 106 Golf and Dolphin Drive um, next to, next to Ribeye. And in terms of the process, I sent out the conditional use permit uh, worksheet earlier uh, with the weekly update. Um, I can pull that up uh, and have that on the screen as, as y'all make your way through um, considering the conditional use permit application. And then uh, also Brett can weigh in on the process. Um, I think we can do it a little bit more condensed um, in terms of not having to make as many motions as we did last time. Um, and like I said, I'd be happy to answer any questions I'm able to. Uh, for the proposed conditional use permit for the itinerant merchant. Yeah, one question, uh, Zach, is this the same outfit that's been here uh, in previous years? Yes, it is. Yeah, they're the same ones that set up in that same location every year. Um, we used to issue zoning permits for it, but with changing gears on the different way of approaching this, um, we've decided to have to go through the itinerant merchant process. Um, so that's why we're going this route this year. Okay. All right, well, I'll entertain a motion to accept the uh, conditional use permit for TNT fireworks. As it, Mr. Mayor, this is... Brett, the Selms here. I think first we need to check and see if um, anybody came to the comment on this from the public. Okay. Can you... Okay, so do we need to go into a, uh, a public hearing, so to speak, for this? No, sir. I think just asking um, if there's anybody that signed up to speak on the matter would be sufficient. Okay. Zach, do we have anybody or anybody that's online right now? Now that would like. Uh, so I don't believe we have anybody with us online, and to my knowledge, we did not receive any public comments on the proposed conditional use permit. Okay, with with this though, just to get some clarity, so we vote on this. Is this one we'll have to redo Wednesday? No, it, it does not require a public hearing, so we should not have to redo this on Wednesday. Okay, just want to make sure I'm not flubbing up here. Okay, so with no comments, uh, then I will entertain that motion for the conditional use permit for TNT firework. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Don. Second. King, second. 
Thank you, Mike. Any discussion? Yeah, uh, the only point I'd make is uh, uh, this is an ongoing process now for I think 22 years since I've been here. Uh, different place, but same deal. Any other discussion? I'm... Were you done, Mike? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yes, I'm sorry. I, I should have said I was. <laughs> Okay. Anybody else have any more discussion? If not, all in favor? King, I. Mike Soft, Mayor. Okay, well, that motion carried. Uh, and next up is commissioner reports. I'm just going to start down the line with who I see. And if you got something to say, speak up. Uh, first up, uh, uh, Commissioner Jim Nalitz. Uh, nothing to add today. All right, Commissioner Waters. That's the tech staff again. I'd like uh, what's doing what Zach says earlier. They're doing a mighty fine job in the work that they're doing. Uh, I was actually one of the ones that called in the pothole over there in Pine Lake where they quite quickly. So I appreciate them doing that as well. But thank you, staff, for, the, for your work. It's your the time. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Commissioner Martin. With uh, everything going on in our country today, I think uh, I'm ever more mindful that uh, the appreciation that, that I, I personally have for our police department. Uh, and I uh, want them to know that I'll support them 110%. Zach, uh, staff, uh, thanks for doing a fine job, keeping the ball rolling, keeping town going. Uh, Public Works, fine job. I can see a lot of uh, a lot of things getting done. Getting excited about the parking lot being done. Uh, maybe uh, getting started on the CAMA facility. Uh, really getting pumped up about that. Uh, especially thinking about uh, getting back to normal, hopefully soon, if there is such a thing anymore in this world. But uh, thanks again. Uh, all the staff and, and 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 employees at the town for the job to do and uh, uh that's all i have thank you uh commissioner king uh no report but i have a question for town manager uh where did they locate the pipe in the parking lot so it's even with the uh two boxes that are located behind um behind subway so it lines up there we we had dan fortin out there who will probably be the one to install it one day if it you know if and when it needs to be installed and that was the best location for it to go to line up um, but we stubbed it up on both sides he provided all the materials and everything um so it's uh it's where um where paxton wanted it to go and then also based off the discussion with dan fortin where it needed to be for a future um expansion if necessary Okay, so it's towards the uh, western end of the lot there. Uh, not it's, in the right uh, of way, but in the. It's towards the. It'd be towards the eastern end of the lot because the actual boxes for the septic system are uh, one's for a grease trap and the other one's for the septic system. Those are located uh, more towards the eastern portion of the lot. Um, so they're in line with that so that they would be able to connect the piping um, rather than having to okay. go. Yeah, and that that was based off of uh, actually meeting on site with Pax and, and uh, talking about it with uh, Dan Port as well to make sure it was a location that that worked for everybody. Thank you. No further comment. Okay, uh, Commissioner Miller. Uh, nothing to report. I just want to echo what's already been said. Is how much I appreciate town staff and all the town employees for everything, the tremendous job they've been doing in the past two to three months through some very trying times. And uh, 
I think they've all done a phenomenal job. And uh, with, with the police department and uh, I don't know if Chief McKinney's still on here or not, but let them know that our that our thoughts and prayers that right now they're short an officer and they're probably going to be short for quite a while. As everybody knows, Officer Hayden's in the hospital, was involved in a motorcycle accident. And it sounds like he's going to probably be out for several weeks, if not months. So I'd just like to let them know we're thinking about him and thinking about them as they continue to do the job they've been doing shorthanded. Thank you, Don. I would concur with that. I tell you, it's a, it would be a horrible, horrible time to be a police officer right now. I can just imagine, uh, you know, the scrutiny they're going through right now and a lot of these towns talking about defunding their police departments. I, you know, soften the language however you want to, man. It's, it's crazy. I just, I'm just so glad we've, we've got such a great department here that I've seen and they all seem to be very personable and uh, just, Great guys, they're out here doing a great job for us, all our staff as well, just have to echo that. And uh, with that comment, I will entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting until I guess we'll meet again Wednesday. I will make, I'll that make motion. a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I'll second. Okay, thank you. All in favor? King I. The hands. King says yes. And I see Steve's hand. All right. Thanks everybody who was here. Thanks to all the staff that joined us this evening. And if anybody else was online, uh, we'll be meeting again a Wednesday, 6 p.m. to finalize everything, give everybody a chance. If you would like to make a public comment, please email us, let us know, and we'd be more than glad to make your voice heard. Thank you, everybody. Have a great evening. Have a good night.